Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. And in this video, we are gonna look at workspaces and everything about them. So let's do it. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. Workspaces, what are they? Why, why do I care about this thing? So with inside of Power BI, there is a concept of workspaces. These workspaces are really just a container for our data sets, reports, dashboards, Excel documents, all of that. So that's how we organize our content with inside of Power BI. The first workspace that you're gonna get introduced to is your My Workspace. This workspace is your workspace, as it says. It's my workspace, not mine, yours. And this is your personal playground. So this is where you can upload your reports, try them out, try and build a dashboard, see what it's gonna look like. So basically like a development type thing. You can share dashboards and reports from your personal My Workspace. And I'll talk about sharing in a little bit, but from your My Workspace perspective, I would ask you not to do that because of the fact that no one can actually get direct access to your My Workspace. It's yours, it's not theirs, it's yours. And so if something goes wrong or if something happens and you know, you're no longer with the company for whatever reason, then you wanna make sure that the reports and dashboards and data sets that you create are still able to be maintained. You can't do that from a My Workspace perspective. So then what are our options? The option would be an app workspace. So app workspaces are the kind of group collaboration workspace of Power BI. So you have your My Workspace and then you have app workspaces. App workspaces are really like the groups inside of Power BI. So if you're a developer and you see group, it's an app workspace. And as of the recording of this video in February of 2019, we are in a transition period between the old workspace experience and the new workspace experience. So really, I wanna focus on the new workspace experience because the old one is gonna be going away at some point. So just know as I talk about app workspaces, I'm talking about it in the context of the new workspace experience. Okay, so app workspace, these are our collaboration workspaces. So we can have members as part of the workspace. Multiple people can access this workspace. This allows us to work together as a team and create items, maybe different, maybe I'm in charge of one report and you're in charge of another report and those are both gonna go into the same app workspace because we're both part of that team or project or whatever. So people have asked me like, well, why would I, in what cases would I create the app workspace? And there could be a lot of different reasons. So maybe you wanna do it from a team perspective. And so you have a team app workspace. Also, you may be working on a given project and that project may have an app workspace in and of itself. So there's different reasons why you would create the app workspace. One thing to be aware of is if you want to enter in an app workspace, you have to have a pro license. So if you're a non-pro user, you still have access to your personal My Workspace, but you cannot directly access an app workspace. Within a workspace, as users are added to that workspace, they can have different roles assigned to them. You will have admins, which obviously can do everything with that workspace, so they can control and add new members. They can also publish or update an app from the app workspace. We'll talk about apps in a second. So as the name implies, they have full control over that app workspace. The next role is gonna be the member and the member can do everything that the admin can do except for adjust permissions to the app workspace as well as you know change any of the settings of the app workspace. So they can control everything from a content perspective. They can share content, they can publish, update the apps. So all of that, they have full control over the content. The next role is gonna be the contributor. So the contributors just have direct access to the content itself. So the PBIX, so the dashboards, reports, data sets. They cannot actually share content out of the app workspace. Also, they cannot publish or update a given app for that app workspace. So their main focus is the content, the direct content itself. Then we've got the reader role. And so the reader role is not actually out today as of the recording of this video, but it will be out soon. And the reader role will do just that. I can consume content from the app workspace, but I can't directly edit it or publish the app or anything like that. And you may ask, why would I want a reader role? And like, why would I want that inside of the app workspace? For starters, a reader role will actually allow you to use like RLS type options for the data set. 
but also you may have a scenario in your deployment of apps where you have your business analyst creating the report, but you want someone to just come in and vet or review that report to make sure it's accurate and looks good. And that person may only need a reader role. They're not actually gonna edit the content. They're just gonna give you feedback. All right, let's talk about settings. So the first setting is gonna be for the actual admins of the tenant. So this is the global admins or the Power BI service administrator. There's actually a tenant level setting for Power BI, which lets you control who can create those app workspaces. So again, this app, this tenant setting is targeted towards the new workspace experience, not the old workspace experience. We're still in that transition phase. So the admins can absolutely control that for the new workspace experience. And then from a general settings perspective, when we create that app workspace, we'll give it a name, we can give it a picture, and we can also define if this workspace is gonna be backed by premium capacity. Not only do you need to be an admin of the app workspace to assign it to premium capacity, but you also have other permissions that are required on the premium side to be able to have access to that capacity. I'm not gonna go into premium capacities in this video. There's tons of content out there on what that's all about. And while they're not necessarily labeled as settings, you can also edit the access controls. This is who has access to the app workspace. So as an admin of the app workspace, you fully control that. Let's talk about storage because there are some limits on storage from an app workspace and a my workspace perspective. Your my workspace and your app workspace for just regular storage is gonna be limited to 10 gigabytes of storage capacity. The difference here is that your my workspace is for you as an individual the app workspace is not tied to that. So the app workspace has its own quota, so to speak, for it. For an app workspace, this actually could get larger than 10 gigabyte if it's backed by premium capacity. I mentioned sharing earlier, but I'm not gonna get too in depth in that because I'm gonna do another video on sharing later. But just know that you can share reports and dashboards from the service, whether it be from the app workspace or your my workspace. Please do it from an app workspace if you're going to do it just to make sure that you've got you know, consistency in your organization so that you don't lose access to things. But the main way to distribute your reports inside of Power BI are what are called apps. And so apps can be published from an app workspace. There's a one-to-one -one mapping here. So you can only have one app per app workspace. And the whole point of apps is to provide a consumption model for your end users. So typically I tell people, don't necessarily add everyone to the app workspace. Add the business analysts, the people that are gonna write the reports, and then add the people that are maybe gonna validate your report. And then from a global, from an actual distribution model, be sure to publish the app and give those users access to the app itself. The app provides that read-only consumption type view of the data. There's also this concept of template apps. And so the idea of a template app is that you can have, you know, build your app like you normally would, but instead of it just being consumed by your organization, you can actually publish it to app source and let other folks consume that app. So think of this maybe from like an ISV model, or maybe you have a service that you're selling to other folks, but you wanna provide a just containerized version of reports, dashboards, data sets for others to consume. You can create that template app and that'll take care of it for you. Some limitations on app workspaces as well. You can only have a max of a thousand data sets inside of a given app workspace or a thousand reports on a single data set. So there are some upper bounds to how much content you can put into an app workspace. Personally, I've never seen like the data sets or reports being that large, but generally the one that I see get hit the most is the other restriction, which is that an individual user can't be assigned to more or can't have access to more than 250 workspaces. So that's the one I see more often of folks hitting, but. All right, so that's just a look over app workspaces and my workspaces and everything about workspaces. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I will try to do my best to answer them. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.